So, uh, thank y'all for helping me get to 5,000 subscribers. I wouldn't have really expected anyone to care about my dumb stuff. I thought it would be fun to do a Q&A session for this occasion. So I asked y'all on both YouTube and Twitter. And there are actually a wide variety of questions. Can you imagine a world where we're all represented by a font? Too straight. What inspired you to create GG Underfell? In early 2016, I got super into Undertale and dove into fan content. I remember seeing Underfell and interpretations of it at the time, and found it all to be... a bit too edgelordy. Like, all the characters were irredeemable assholes that just wore red and black. I thought that was dumb, and so I made my own interpretation. The original idea for it was, what if it was more Undertale-y? But that soon evolved into, what would the underground of despair look like if the characters were still themselves? I still like how uh, a lot of early comments I got on the first episode complained about the ruins not being red. Just how much planning has gone into the different routes. Are you carefully making sure they intersect as closely as possible to keep asset creation to a minimum? or just letting them spin wildly out even if it takes a lot of extra effort. They're already diverging hard. So with how separated the different worlds are in Delta Traveler, it's easy to get away with route intersection, similar to Deltarune. Though I think it's even more difficult to make sure that if the player aborts obliteration at any point, that the route they take still makes sense with what they've already done. Ultimately, most of the obliteration differences from here on out will involve the main three characters. If you're comfortable sharing, when did you find out you were trans? And what's the story if that's not too personal? I always thought about how nice it would be to be a girl since I was like 13, but I never explored that I might actually want to present that way until I was around 18 when I found myself exclusively wanting to make female characters to present myself. Before then, I didn't really like how I looked or felt. Nowadays, I feel a lot more comfortable being more feminine, and that's just how I've been since then. How much love do you have towards Toontown Online, and what are your favorite gags? My interest in Toontown nowadays is pretty complicated. I like the worlds, the art style, and the idea of the game, the nostalgia of the original, but I really just fucking hate the gameplay nowadays which stems from how random and not skillful it is. Which, I know why it was done, which was so the game worked with a subscription model. But in a world where the original game is dead and you can play it for free, it's not really that appealing. It doesn't help that every single Toontown fan game is a turn-based grindy MMO that's directly built off of the original game, using the same old-ass plasticky bottles from 1999! I feel like it'd be a lot more accepting of this if the visuals were a lot more expressive, but... No! Nope. I'm just waiting for that game-changing Toontown game, the one where it's super expressive, the models are on point, the presentation is stellar. And... we're kind of getting that, but that's only exclusive to the COGS for some reason? I don't really get that, but whatever. Have you considered any projects outside of the Undertale slash Deltarune sphere? I was a developer and 3D animator for a Toontown fan game called Toontown Offline from 2017 to 2019, and then for a short period in 2021. Needless to say, that was a shit show, and I probably won't join any more Toontown projects. Outside of that, maybe someday. I don't know what, but I guess we'll find out. Alright, now we get into the multi-question questions. What and who have been some of your main inspirations as both a content creator and game developer? Video-wise, I've always wanted to make YouTube videos since the age of nine. I used to make YouTube poops based on other YouTube poops, and I had no idea what the context of any of the jokes were. I did not know that Pigas was a reference to something. Oh my poor poor, innocent, nine-year-old brain. When I actually made my first YouTube account in 2014, I wanted to make gameplay videos akin to Game Grumps. 
that never really went anywhere. I can't exactly say what my main inspiration for videos really were, because they were probably built up over time from various other video styles, and they'll probably keep coming in from other places. I mean, you see this PNG of my persona on the screen? Maybe that's a reference to something. Maybe that was borrowed from some other YouTubers. Game development was also a thing I wanted to do around age 10, but I had zero clue what I was doing. I remember I downloaded Game Maker and like two Mario project files and had zero clue what I was doing. I probably butchered the PC with malware or something. Funnily enough, the thing that pushed me to game development was actually Toontown in mid-2017. I started messing around with the Panda 3D engine to make Toontown animations, which then led me to messing around with the Toontown codebase itself, which landed me onto the Toontown offline team, which led me to making my first Undertale fan game, Atonement. Do you feel there's something in particular that's had a profound impact on you and your desire to create? I've always wanted to see what my capabilities are as a creator. I look at other people making really cool stuff and I'm like, I want to do that too. And my thought process this is pretty much, if I like it, then other people might. And so far, that seems to be working. I don't know what'll happen if I start making original stuff, but I guess we'll see. GG Underfell TS Underswap crossover win. Does Delta Traveler not count? I'm kidding, but... If this is a serious question, then why don't you walk into my DMs with the proposal, Mr. Team Switched Director? Opinion on Twizzlers? Twizzlers are kind of bland. I don't hate them, but like, I'd rather take other candies. Who's your favorite Sonic character? Amy Rose or Blaze the Cat? Both of them are fucking awesome, and god damn it, I want a playable version of them both. God. Damn it! How beat cultist maze, sad face. <laughs> so for the cultist maze, uh, look for the ones that aren't in an endless walk cycle. Basically the ones that aren't animating. Go talk to them and then they'll move. Any last words? I am in your walls! You said Paula originally wasn't going to be a party member, but in that case, what was her original role in the story? An early idea for Section 2 was that it would have probably just been Peaceful Rest Valley. I forgot that that part of the game was as short as it was. Paula's role in the story only came after I realized, well, Peaceful Rest Valley wouldn't have been enough. When you first learned to code, what kept you motivated? When it came to programming, the one thing that kept me motivated was, well, my stuff actually working. And especially with game development stuff, seeing the stuff that you're making come together in such a great way, it's just really satisfying. And I think that's why the Paula fight was so satisfying to make. I still feel really proud about that, even though it's such a fucked up situation in the game lore itself. But it's still so cool. I remember I made concept art back in like November of 2021. And seeing that come true was just so amazing. What's your favorite theme from the Delta Traveler OST? Aside from like future soundtrack stuff that hasn't been released yet, I think Ruder Monsters has been the one that I've had on loop the most, even while it was still being finalized. So like, it's just been a banger for like most of its existence. And weirdly enough, that's the one soundtrack that uh, people on the team really kind of ragged on, I feel. Like it got constant complaints about it, which is very interesting. Interesting. What's your favorite theme from the Undertale OST? Asgore hands down. It's such an emotional track for a battle that just really feels like the end. Of course, it's obviously not the end, but you know, it really does feel like it. What do you think about Mike or the fan interpretation of Mike? I think people need to stop building expectations for Mike. Honestly, it could turn out that there is no Mike in Chapter 3 or that he doesn't really have too much relevance. Maybe he could be like the chapter's hidden boss that you need the shadow mantle for. But hey, if I'm wrong, then I'll look fucking stupid. Attention, this audio was recorded before the spam and sweepstakes and no longer
longer represent Sarah's thoughts. I noticed Hugh Cycle's Des design was used in hard mode. Will you be keeping her lore for Des and Gaster, or will you be switching it up a bit? I really wanted to use Hugh Cycle's interpretation of Des here and mix it up with my interpretation of Gaster for Delta Traveler. So yeah, I'm pretty much mixing it up. Is Shay getting quested going to be a running gag in Delta Traveler? Ready, zoom? Are you kidding me? <laughs> what? What was that? The quest is complete. So what do I have to gain from doing it again? What has been the most gratifying part of Delta Traveler's popularity for you? The most gratifying part has been the reactions. All the funny stuff, all the shocking stuff, I've loved seeing how people react to it. For example... Aren't you a cop? I would never... <laughs> <laughs> ah! Oh! Ah! I wasn't ready for this! <laughs> oh no, poor Noel. No, it's Aunt Flowey is crazy. What happened? Doobie. Which is your favorite section planned for the game? I'm actually excited for section 6 because I haven't seen anyone try and make a Mario and Luigi fan game and have it actually come out. I'm really hoping Delta Traveler is able to change that, even though it's an Undertale fan game at its core. Can you show the YouTube people your characters? I feel like more people need to see them. Look at these fun characters. And look, one of them is me! What games do you usually play? Recently, I've been playing a lot of Sonic games and Mario Kart. I also got a PS2 recently, and I plan on trying out a lot of PlayStation games, or at least some. If you want to watch me play video games, you should check out my Twitch channel, where I play video games live. I'm also going to place a link in the description. I'm pointing down at the description box, which I hope doesn't move to the side in a future YouTube website. Website update! Do you know a YouTuber called Merg? Yeah, I know Merg. He often mispronounces my username. This was made by Reno GG. Reno GG. Reno GG. Reno. Sarah Reno. Please, dude, it's pronounced Rhino. Please. <laughs> Is Susie's pencil from Section 1 one of those giant book fair pencils? I need answers. That was 100% the idea behind it. Honestly, I'm surprised that no one has really gotten that. Some people thought it was like a baseball bat or something. How many months you say that Section 3 of Delta Traveler would be completed? Ideally, it could be done in the same two-month window that Section 1 was completed in. There's some extra content that I want to do, so maybe four to five months would be the actual development time. I haven't started on anything yet past the teaser at the end of version 2, and I'm currently on break. So, when will you be back at making Underfell videos? So I think it would be interesting to take the Petscop approach and actually develop future Underfell episodes into somewhat playable segments instead of animating everything by hand. Animating everything by hand has been very painstaking. There's a lot that I can't reuse, and a lot of parts that would be simple if I programmed them, and then just reused those parts for, like, okay, all the text in Underfell episodes so far have been done by hand, typed letter for letter each frame. That is so annoying to do. What I plan on doing for the next episode is actually developing part of Delta Traveler Section 3 first, and then after I get to a certain point, I'll copy everything I did so far and use what I made for it to use in episode 6 and then release it and then use that code base for future Underfell episodes. When episode 6 releases, you'll know that section 3 is getting pretty close to being done. Maybe it would be at the 60 to 70 complete mark by then. Were there any other games slash AUs in consideration for a section in Delta Traveler? I was a bit worried about Mario and Luigi's inclusion possibly attracting the attention of ninjas. So I briefly considered asking permission to swap it with Undertale Yellow. Ultimately, I decided against it as it would have just ended up being a repeat of the TS Underswap section. By the way, the section list looks like this. 
Yes, it's final. No, I'm not adding any more sections, if you're going to ask that. Out of curiosity, why was Noelle chosen to be the third party member instead of Ralsei? If Ralsei was there, how would Toriel and Flowey react to him? Noelle is a very crucial part of Deltarune's plot, and I can't wait to see more of her in the game. Since most of Delta Traveler takes place in the light world, I felt it would make more sense for Noelle to join you instead of Ralsei. I mean, she has all of his moves, plus her own ice spells, so it works out, and it ends up being more interesting from a gameplay standpoint. I feel like it opens the doors for more ways to approach stuff, like you could swap out Noelle's ring and her magic for more physical attacks, or maybe there could be different elemental rings. That would be interesting. And even if Ralsei was the third party member, he wouldn't even join you in section one, but if he did, I I imagine Toriel and Flowey would freak the fuck out. Would Asgore have had a similar reaction to seeing Chris as Toriel had? Not gonna lie, I have no idea how Asgore would react. Maybe not as hard as Toriel, but would definitely give it some thought before deciding. No, Kara died long ago. Is Noelle canonically trans? <laughs> fuck yes! If you could pick just one thing you would change about GG Underfell in hindsight, what would you change? I would definitely change Toriel's character. I'd change her from this maniacal cannibal who changes instantly to this despair-filled sociopath who slowly learns that secluding herself won't fix anything. I feel like treating her as crazy would undermine, you know, the despair thing. She definitely shouldn't have hugged Frisk at the end of the pacifist fight. If you had to pick a different game from what was already chosen for the lineup for one of the sections, what would you choose? Everything that I want to do is going to be in the game. I don't really have anything that I'd really like to put in the game except for stuff that wouldn't fit like Sonic. No offense, but why did section 3? I'm pretty sure you mean section 2. Why did section 2 take so long? There was a lot to do. So many assets and unique interactions, etc. I did not anticipate it being that long to make. I thought it would only take like four months, but it ended up being like seven, six if you don't count the break that I took in March. Honestly, I feel like it has to do with Happy Happy Village. I didn't anticipate this much willpower would need to go into making a town, and even then, I wouldn't even consider it complete. Like, I completely neglected the, uh, the shop. And I planned on doing like an easter egg with the small house at the beginning, but I sort of scrapped that, and even then no one really tried to go into that house. How are you gonna avoid Nintendo copyright for Earthbound, Zelda, and Mario? You know what? I won't avoid it. If they ask me to take down the game, then I will. Could you share light to what you had in plan for some of your cancelled project? I'm assuming you're talking about Skeletal Vengeance, but to be honest, I could totally make a whole video covering every single canned game project I've had up until now, which are mostly Undertale fan games, but a few are Toontown related, and all of them I pretty much haven't talked about before, so I could totally talk about some of them sometime. How has this project altered your mental health, if at all? Have you had to take any breaks or suffered any frustration slash burnout? What are tips you'd give to other fans making fan games? I've been very cautious as to not develop some kind of superiority complex, as I feel people tend to fall into that pitfall when something they've made becomes big. This has been something that I've tried to work on ever since my Underfell animations took off. If it becomes too much, I tend to try to take a step back away from it, but nowadays it just feels like everyone online recognizes me as that Delta Traveler girl. Honestly, I've just been taking a step back from the internet more and more. I did take a break from Delta Traveler during March. I also suffered a burnout because of the buggy release of version 2, and I'm currently taking a break from the game despite some issues that weren't in the game at launch. Oops. For anyone making fan games, I'd say to just make what you think would be fun or interesting. And you know what? Who cares if it has, like, if it's based on, like, fanon concepts? I mean, I probably wouldn't really like it that much, but 
I know some people will, just so long as your idea is interesting. My original idea for Delta Traveler was to take Chris and Susie and place them in otherworldly situations, which has been a fun writing exercise for me, as well as an interesting game design exercise. Like, I think this is the most complete video game I've made from the ground up. And even though it's been mostly recreating stuff, especially on the Undertale side of things, it's been very interesting to try to create fun Undertale-esque challenges for, like, Earthbound enemies and such. And the final question, would you smooch a shark? Uh, yeah. Why don't you come over here, Mallory? Aww. And those are all the questions that I got. No, it isn't. But I feel like if I answered any more, I'd wear out my voice even more and become more and more of a stuttering mess. So I guess I'll just probably end it here. Thank you all so much for watching. If you didn't know, I have a Patreon where I reward patron members with exclusive access to YouTube content before it goes live, as well as maybe some sneak peeks. Here's a list of the current patrons as of making this video. I thank you all so much for supporting me. I really hope at some point I can get out of doing, you know, a day job and just do this as a living and also be able to focus on game development as well. And you know what? If you liked this video, smash that like button. If you aren't subscribed, you should totally do that. I have zero clue what I'll do if I hit 100,000 subs, but I'll probably do something fun. Take a look at this graph and the big gap between sub viewers and unsub viewers. A fun twist for me to bring this out at the end of the video instead of at the beginning. <laughs> but seriously, if you want to see more videos, then it would probably be useful to subscribe. That's all I have to say, and I hope you all have a great day or night. Bye-bye!